So I was like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. there's got to be a market opportunity mm-hmm. for these types of services. Man, the IT world is, is it, it, it's corrupt and there's a lot of problems with it. And I thought maybe I could start something that could work to, to, to redeeming this, this industry in a way. That, that was the spark. Um, that yeah. got things in motion. Hey everyone, welcome back to Stories That Move. I'm Mason, and as always, I've got Matt here with me. And today we are diving into a story that is a bit closer to the tech world, but with a twist that's all about real life, resilience, and making a difference. Yes, we are chatting with our good friend, Michael Paul, the man behind Winona IT, and his story is amazing. It's about more than just tech. It starts with his childhood south of Philadelphia and moves to an unexpected chapter in Switzerland and leads him to building a business that's all about doing things the right way. So let's get into it and hear straight from Michael how he navigates the world of IT with a compass set on integrity, how he's built a culture around learning and growth at Winona IT. Michael, thanks so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Stories That Move podcast. Um, And we'll just dive in. Uh, Love being here. Uh, Matt Duell here with my good friend and co-host, Mason Geiger. Good to see you, Mason. Yeah, you as well. And uh, today we have with us Michael Paul, also a a good friend, president and owner of Winona IT. Um, We go way back and and recently in the last few years, we've had the privilege of of working together. Um, Our company working with yours, your company working with ours. You guys are a huge part of this facility that we're sitting in, helping us with our infrastructure and and supporting us from the IT side. So we're grateful for you, for your team, and uh, just thrilled to have you here today too dive into a little bit more of, of your world, yeah. uh, whether it's hunting, whether it's sure. IT and everything in between. So thanks for being here. I think there's going to be a story later on about like a 25 hour car drive with, <laughs> with Matt and I. So we'll, we'll get to that. Oh um, my goodness. That rekindled the, the relationship, <laughs> that, didn't it? Oh, that is so true. Yeah. That is so that's... true. Yeah. We'll, de- we'll definitely have to unpack that. We'll definitely have to unpack that. Well, Michael, to, to kick us off um, today, start off by just briefly sharing a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Just you know, where you're from, what, what growing up looked like for you. Yeah. So I originally grew up, um, right outside of Philadelphia. I was about 45 minutes or so outside of Philadelphia, um, town called Kennett square. Actually, I grew up in a town called Landenburg, Pennsylvania, then moved to a town called Kennett square. It's actually the mushroom capital of the U S you know, we refer to ourselves as the orthopedic capital, but where, where I grew up was the mushroom capital. Oh, wow. And so there's mushroom farms, everywhere where I grew up. If okay. you if you just go to Kroger, Meyer, yeah. find a pack of mushrooms, flip it over, it's gonna say Kennett Square, Pennsylvania on the back of it. So it's wow. um, okay. yeah, it's kind of interesting. Lived there until I think I was about fifteen years old. Okay. And uh, my dad, I remember like it was yesterday, he's telling he, he comes home and he tells me he got a, a new job and it's in Switzerland. And I was like, I'd never really I mean I, I'd heard of this country of course, but know nothing about it whatsoever. I remember jumping on YouTube and like watching a quick video. And, and if I recall correctly, it was like a, a little bit of a weird cultural, like there was yodeling and some other stuff. I was like, I don't really know what to think about this. But um, got a chance to move over and spent my high school years in Switzerland. I went to an international school in Basel, Basel, Switzerland, actually. Okay. Um, where where Medardis is currently headquartered. Mm-hmm. Um, Basel is actually the pharmaceutical capital of the world. So okay. a lot of really big name pharmaceutical companies headquartered there in Basel. I lived right on the border of France, Germany, and Switzerland. I was right at the, the cross section of wow. those three countries. So wow. lived there for a number of years. Um, my parents actually bought a, a summer house here in Winona Lake. Okay. And, um, they have some family in Laporte, Indiana, about an hour north of here. So I'd, I'd spent a month or two every summer coming back to the U.S. and and living here in Winona Lake, and you know it's a great spot in the summer. So yeah. when I was done with high school, and I knew my parents were going to continue to live overseas, it just felt like a really good fit for me to kind of stick to what I knew. I did, my connections on the East Coast had had kind of moved on, or you know 
went to college and, and kind of dispersed. And sure. Yeah. This was kind of home now. And um, I've been here ever since. That was 2009, I think, I moved moved here. So. That's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. Awesome. So growing up in Philly, yeah. an Eagles fan? Diehard Eagles fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to you know life in, in Switzerland, how yeah. much do you feel like that really shaped you who oh, yeah. you are um i mean moving at 15 that's a huge time yeah. frame to make a move like that <laughs> yeah um man don't don't make me cry thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> no it's it absolutely the biggest i'm trying to think I, th- I think it's the most impactful thing you can really do in your childhood to be uprooted and just thrown into a different culture mm. and um what i learned that I think I, I can't, I can't recall life as a 15 year old super well, like what was I like personally and what my personality, but what that taught me was taking a chance is it can have huge payoff. I mean, I look at my time in Switzerland as just amazing, just amazing. Yeah. And I saw a lot of people, um, similar situations to me, move over there, go to the international school and, and just didn't take advantage of the opportunity, ended up getting out as soon as they could. They were kind of um, afraid to assimilate, afraid to learn the language, and they just they just totally missed out. Their, their kind of adversity to change sure. was hugely detrimental, yeah. I, I think, to them. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, um, man, I learned the language, I learned the culture, I did the best I could. And... I just look at that as a huge highlight in my life, and it's it's definitely changed how I see the world. It's changed how I view myself, and it's it's definitely changed. Um, I think I'm I'm not afraid to take a risk because I, I took mm-hmm. one that was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. So, and you came out of on the other side absolutely. just fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. So then. Fast forward for us a little bit. So yeah. um, about 2009, you, you move here. Um, yeah. What was the moment for you that you really started to lean in on technology? And, and then, and maybe yeah. these things aren't mutually exclusive, but then entrepreneurship sure, with sure. that. So the tech story actually started in Switzerland. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of funny. Um, really good friend of mine in high school, unfortunately no longer with us, but he, he got grounded in high school. And part of him getting grounded was he had to give up his computer. So I remember he called me and he said, hey, I'll, for 200 bucks, you can have my gaming computer I just built with, with one caveat, I'm gonna keep this case because mm-hmm. I'm gonna rebuild you know, when, I'm, when I can. Yeah. So basically he gave me a box full of computer parts and um, you know, there was a video card in there, RAM, a couple hard drives. And that was, that was my very first introduction to, I'll say the tech world. I okay. had to research how to put this thing together. I had to buy parts. I had to go down to this computer shop that they didn't speak any English. And I had to kind of negotiate and, and, and you know figure out what I needed. They didn't have Radio Shack. In no, okay. no, they okay. did not. And I, I put this thing together and um, man, you're gonna get kicked out of this, but there was this game back then called Crisis. Do you, does that ring a bell? Uh-uh. Okay. It was like, I think NVIDIA, and I think at the time it was ATI, who's now AMD. Mm-hmm. They were touting this game as like the most demanding game for a gaming computer. Like there was, you had to spend all kinds of money to get this thing to run. And I just, I, I put it together and I was just fascinated that I could put this thing together. It could turn on, I could you know, have a video game even run off this thing that I just built that was basically scraps a minutes mm. ago, you know? Wow. And uh, that was kind of, that was what got me interested. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's so funny. I, I remember hearing top people in tech today say that what got them started was putting together a PC in their, in their teen years. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's my story too. That was my mm-hmm. introduction. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. So, I mean, what was next then? What was the next step for you where you started to lean in of like, this was really fun. I learned some cool things, but th- this is what I think I want to do with my life. Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I, uh, I came to Grace College here in, in Winona Lake and um, I remember getting some really good advice from my dad. I remember hearing him say that there's a bright future in tech, you know, and, uh, and this is 2009. It's not like it was 50 years ago, but yeah, right. I think, you know, the iPhone had just launched. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, it was a different time than today. 
And, um, you know, he, I just, I remember him saying that there's going to be a lot of career opportunities and I decided to major in, uh, let's see, what was it called? Management of information systems. Okay. A little bit of programming, a little bit of traditional tech. I also majored in, in business to try to um, just broaden capabilities there. Yeah. And I got a job my freshman year at Staples. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of complaining I could do about the job. But sure. at, at the end of the day, I was fixing computers. I was mm -hmm. selling computers. I was um, learning about, you know, how, how retail worked. Um, mm. It was good. It was a good first job for me, and yeah. I only did that job for probably six to eight months before I got an internship um, at Sylvius Insurance Group. Okay, in two thousand ten. Um, but that was that. That was just my first uh, customer service, and yeah. again, selling tech, and yeah, I think it. I think it kind of opened the door for me. Because I'm sure at Staples, like in the customer service role, like you get a, I'm sure a wide variety of people coming Huge. in with tech, <laughs> tech Huge. needs. And Huge. so having to meet them at their level mm -hmm. of kind of, I'm sure yep. that was. Definitely. I mean, there were plenty of customers that would come in and they'd say, hey, my number one priority is budget. And mm -hmm. so you're learning, okay, you know, how do I get them what they need, but focus on that. You had other customers that would come in and they wanted the computer and the case and the printer and the software and so you gotta you gotta learn how to do that. Um, I remember a colleague of mine formatting a computer completely, and you know this poor woman came in and all of her pictures were gone. Oh. Everything. So, but I mean, but what you learn is you learn how either how to deal with that situation or how to not deal with that situation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I learned a lot. Like I, I look at my time at Staples, and my my manager was good, and um, there were things about the job that I. You know, I wouldn't do again. Yeah. But overall, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I think some people came in and they clocked in and out and they got out of there. Yeah. And they, they missed an opportunity. I, I learned a lot. So. Mm. Yeah. That's wild. So, you know, knowing your story, the, the uh, internship at Sylvia yeah. obviously went well. Yeah, it went well. <laughs> yeah. Ended up putting in 10 years there. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So it was, that was great. Incredible. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, take us, you know, maybe a little bit through that journey and, and then when the entrepreneurial sort of bug for you to just step yeah. out and say, I, I love this, I love what I'm doing, but I think there's a way we could serve more people. So, yeah, 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 no, you nailed it. I mean, I got started there as an intern. Um, man, I, I was not a good colleague. I was not a good employee. Hmm. I... Yeah, I mean... What makes you say that? Yeah, I just... I, I, I didn't... It's kind of hard to articulate, but I, I was young. I mean, I think that's a summary. I was yeah. young and inexperienced. And, you know, we've, at, at One Own IT, our organization, we've poured into an internship program because I want to give people an opportunity the way I was given an opportunity. A little bit more structure, yeah. a little bit more of a defined program, if you would. Mm -hmm. But, um, man, without that internship, it's just... It, you know, we talk about how impactful moving overseas was. My internship is is probably second to that in terms of career. I'm talking about specifically career impacting things. And um, yeah, I just I just learned a lot. You know, I, I just started off really rough and green um, and and learned a lot, learned how to be a better colleague and coworker. Ended up getting a couple promotions during my time there. Um, I went from a help desk technician to help desk manager. And I was able to hire three or four employees with me. Then um, we ran into an interesting situation at, at Sylvius where the external help we were getting in IT, um, th there, was, there were some problems there. There were just a lot of problems. And I ended up being one of probably two or three employees that ended up um, parting ways with, with that organization mm. and then taking over tons of new responsibilities. Mm. So before I knew it, I was in charge of 30 different servers and, and backups and security and the network and my help desk team and providing, you know, excellent service. We, we rolled out a help desk uh, system and, and I just got a chance to almost start from scratch, really. Mm. I mean, and that, wow. that was really impactful. So this really is impactful. where you had... Uh, almost like a third party 
service provider who's inside working with you, that relationship ends. Yes. And you all are now reconfiguring the entire and and we're it. Yeah. There's okay. no we're the end of the line. Hmm. There's wow. a problem. It it's gonna go through an escalation and end up on my desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I did that for a number of years. Wow. And I, I again I just learned a ton. I mean, you, you don't have a choice. You either sink or swim in that situation. And I, I probably subconsciously, but I, I chose, okay, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. I don't know a lot about servers, but now I'm in charge. Yeah. So yeah. I got to get it figured out. And I think what that has, going back to moving overseas, when I moved overseas, I could either stick to myself don't go outside, you know, just I could go to an American church, an American school, or I could take advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think that payoff led to some of these other subconscious decisions in my career. Take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Yes. I mean, it. it's worth it. Yeah. It's scary sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't do great work. But... You know, I I was always anxious to like speak German to someone Swiss. That's a really good example. Mm -hmm. When they see you try, they're they're gonna bend over backwards for you. You know, and yeah. it's like, what's the worst that can happen? I'm gonna mispronounce something. Okay, yeah, yeah. Be, that'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you, I feel like you learn so much more in those like, yeah, stepping out of like, oh, absolutely, yeah, stepping outside of your comfort yeah. zone and just being a little vulnerable. Absolutely, being open to mistakes, and then yeah, what you learn through that is absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. Any any stories or memories from that season where it just felt like the house is on fire? Like, <laughs> what are we going to do next? Um, so Sylvia's Insurance Group, you know, they service um, producers, farmers. Okay. And uh, farming is is relatively seasonal. There's yeah. a really busy season. Well, think think of it like this: like if you worked at Cedar Point, you, you've got a really busy season, yeah. and then you're in the clear, right? It was. Sylvius's busiest season, January through March. Yeah. And my colleague had just resigned, I think in December. Mm -hmm. And um and this is earlier on than some of the things I talked about where I had a team around me. This sure. is this is early on. Colleague had resigned, busy season. I was on my own. Mm -hmm. And I went through that entire busy season supporting I would say in the ballpark of 60 employees and probably 100 agents in in that ballpark. Yeah. By myself. Wow. That was nuts. Yeah. That was nuts. I remember getting to a spot where I would instantly reply to people saying, I got your email. Like, give me a call if it's super urgent. It's going to be a while. Yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> getting to that point. So, yeah. wow. so, cause like, yeah. how are, how in that season, like, how do you balance? Like, you're on your own. I'm sure you've got yeah, help desk stuff coming through. Mm -hmm. You've got the infrastructure, like, daily things you yep. got to be doing is yep. to make sure things are moving smooth and just trying to, like, manage prioritizing to keep this thing going. And yeah. I mean, truly at that moment, it was the, the squeakiest wheels got the, got yeah. the oil for sure. I mean, it was, it was, um, whoever yelled the loudest would get the attention at that time. <laughs> now, thankfully that was a three month period and it, yeah. it cool, it cooled down. But, um, yeah, as far as balancing, I, I, I really didn't, I just did the best I could. Yeah. Which I mean, coming through that and coming on the other side of me and like, Holy cow, we made it through. Like, what what were some of the biggest learnings that you had coming through that season of just like as yeah. we start to redevelop and find that next person who's coming in, knowing what yeah. you're looking for? And I think I think my my biggest learning experience during that time is something that we coach a lot on today, which is look, you're allowed to mess up. You're allowed to struggle. You're allowed to um you know, not feel the greatest or or, or have a lot of stress. Yeah. Mm. What you can do is you can communicate really well. Yeah. It will buy you a ton of grace with a customer yeah. or, or with your manager. Yeah. You know, it, it's like, in other words, it's okay that you're maybe having a really tough personal situation. We're, we're not going to judge you or put you down for that at all. Right. What you can do to buy a little bit of grace and, and possibly, you know, explain this in a way that we can come alongside you and support you is to say, Hey, I, I have a personal situation yeah. going on. Or, you know, my, um, during that sales season, it was the response to the client to say, I got it. I got your ticket. I got your, your request. I hear you slammed right now. Mm -hmm. 
not making excuses, just literally your number 70 in queue. Yeah. Mm. So give me a call if this is super urgent. It's just good communication yeah. buys you a lot of slack, frankly. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think so that's good. one of the biggest lessons during that time period. Yeah, so good. Awesome, awesome. So you built a ton of amazing systems. You worked through, built an incredible team. Where does Winona IT come into the yeah. picture? How, how, does, yeah. how does that come to be? So at the, it's funny, I actually took uh, an extended vacation and I was going to work uh, two weeks remote in Alaska and then take two weeks off. We were going to do four weeks in Alaska. And we, we got an email in from a local nonprofit um, and, and they said, hey, I know you're an insurance company, but we, we've heard IT is, is a strength over there for you guys. We are really struggling with IT. We mm -hmm. think we're probably getting ripped off. We're arguing with our IT provider all the time. We, we feel like we're getting taken advantage of. Can you come in and do an assessment? Mm -hmm. And at that time when we received that, believe it or not, I was really thinking about, I had a really hard time hiring good help as far as a third party. Sure. You know, we had tried maybe three or four um, of course, I, I talked to you about ultimately terminating one of them because we just couldn't get on the same page. So I was like, wait a minute. We had that issue. They have that issue. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a market opportunity mm -hmm. for these types of services. Yeah. You know, there has to be. And that, that was the spark. Yeah. Um, that yeah. got things in motion. I wanted to help that charity really bad mm -hmm. because I knew this situation that they were in yeah. and without even just, just by the email alone. Yeah. My gut told me they weren't getting taken advantage of. Mm. They were. And you know, there, I knew what I was going to uncover <laughs> because I had gone through those things. Yeah. Yes. And, um, it's, it's really sad at, at the end of the day, the market that I'm in is, is relatively corrupt. It's, it's mm. pretty void of, of integrity. I use the analogy a lot. I think there's, there's some amazing mechanics out there. This is not meant to be an insult. Sure. There's some bad mechanics out there. Yep. And they, you know, if a mechanic rips you off, you're, you're none the way. I mean, you don't know. Yeah. You're right. not going to get it figured right. out. Yep. Um, man, the IT world is, is, it, it's, it's corrupt and there's a lot of problems with yeah. it. And I thought... Maybe I could start something that could work to to, to redeeming this this industry in a way. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm condensing a lot of <laughs> sure stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know that's that's kind of what really got the ball rolling. Amazing. So you went to Sylvia's leadership. Yeah. And basically said, hey. I've got this idea, this concept. I think there's other people out here that could use the services we are providing for, for Sylvius. Right. And then you launched from there. That that's exactly right. I okay. mean, and I remember having to sit down thinking to myself, man, what are the chances they say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Chances seem, I'll say 51%. <laughs> what are the chances that they say yes? And let me take a couple of my key people with me. Okay. Yeah. Mm, 25%. <laughs> what are the chances they say? Yes. Let me take a handful of people with me and say they want to be client number one. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, what, what's it going to hurt? Let's sit down and have the conversation. And, and much to my surprise, honestly, I, I was surprised because there's a lot of ways it could fail. Yeah. Yeah. They, they could become, um, you know, a lot less focus on them. They could become an afterthought, you know, their service level could, could drop. There's, there's a lot of reasons why an organization wouldn't want to do that. Sure. And, Dis I, I, and it's, it's not personal. Yeah. It's disrupting not personal. the service that they have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. It's just, I'm just speaking factually. Yeah. yeah. Sit down, have the conversation. There was an enthusiastic yes. Mm. And take, take your key people. Wow. And we would love for you to service us. And, and I mean, there's no secret that jumpstart is a critical piece of our success. Yeah. Sure. I didn't worry about feeding my family day one. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, 
yeah, they they have nowhere near the jump start. And I, I had a really good jump start. Still need to figure out how to run an IT business. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Still need to figure out how to sell, how to how to do tons of things that I had zero experience with. But I had a client day one and I had a, a handful. I believe I took three people over. I was trying to remember. Is it three? I think I took three people over with me and um, got started in 2019. So okay. that was um, that was our start. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So, and again, it's like that pattern of seeing an opportunity and yeah. being willing to step into that uncomfortable, take a risk and Absolutely. be like, Hey, what's the worst that could happen? Right. And then seeing just like the dividends pay off yeah. tenfold through that. Yep. Um, not saying it's easy. It's no, that, like, it, no. it's like, but willing to like, Hey, we're going to go through the struggle. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through these challenges. We're going to figure yeah. it out. I'm going to step in and know I'm going to be over my head. There's things that I don't know yet. Yep. But yeah, again, it's like being vulnerable and knowing there's going to be people who are going to surround, surround you yep. and that and help you. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, yeah, I mean, who were some of the, again, you're, you're stepping into being that like hands-on yep. figuring out yep. and now you're, you're leading an organization Yeah. who was kind of helping mentor you through that. Who were some of those key, yeah. key people in your life during that time? Well, my wife was a big one, mm -hmm. you know, um, tons of support. Uh, really made things possible that otherwise would have been super tough. Mm -hmm. And I think um, my my parents as well. So my, my dad was an executive um, at, a, at a big multinational company. So, you know, it's, it's, it's different. We're not publicly traded. And, you know, his number one goal ultimately at the end of the day was value to the shareholders. Yeah. We're privately held. We have some other values. But um, the business acumen and, and guidance. Actually, I'll tell you a quick story. Some of my dad's guidance. One of my first major proposals, I, I gave him a call like an hour before. And I said, Dad, I, I just, I'm so nervous. This is, this is the biggest. At, at the time, it was huge. Okay, Today yeah. it would be okay or nice, yeah. but it was huge then. I, I honestly, at that moment, thought this is going to make or break yeah. me even, <laughs> yes. let alone the company. And I said, Here, here's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about charging, you know, um, I'm going to make up. I don't remember the numbers. Yeah. I'm going to make them up. You know, $2,500 a month for this service and 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 $2,000 to get started. Hmm. And he goes, hey, if it were me, I would think, uh, I would think that's a pretty poor uh, service that you're offering. I was like, Dad, what are you talking about? It's a ton of money. <laughs> he goes, I would think that's bottom of the barrel. Mm. I, I probably would say no. I was like, well, Dad, what are you talking about? Mm. And he goes, man, you need to be $8,000 a month, 25000 to get started. Again, I, I just made sure, up numbers, right, sure, but just to, just sure. to give you another. that scale, yeah. And I was like, Dad, they're going to laugh me out of the room. And he goes, no, no, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, if... If you undersell yourself now, you'll never get corrected. Number one, and number yeah. two, they're gonna think you're, you're, uh, you know, Walmart brand or whatever. Mm. It's like okay. Walk in that office, give the presentation. They cut the presentation short and say, "We're all in. Let's see the slide. Uh, let's see the price." I had a, a price slide. I pull it up there, and it's twenty five thousand, and it's it's like eight or nine thousand per month. They don't hesitate for a millisecond and they say, we're in, we're all in, let's get it signed. I would have undersold us yeah. so short. Wow. And, and, and by the way, with that client who's still a client today, zero questions about ROI on that contract. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I would have undersold us tremendously. I mean, th and these are things that you just learn along the way. Yeah. Sure. But it... The question, to loop back to the question, yeah. who's been supportive? My wife, my dad, my mom, very, very, very supportive. And a lot of good guidance. Um, I've got really good customers, really good business partners. Um, you know, there's there's great employees that I have on staff yeah. that, Scott Naveen, who you guys yeah. know really yeah. well. Yes. Yeah. Um, Brad Gutwine, you guys know yeah. really well. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I could go on for a long time. Um, really good people around me, really good mentors. Um, the list would be a couple minutes yeah. long, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. but that's, that's, that's part of learning too. You surround yourself with, yeah. with people that yep. can give you good guidance. Yes. Um, it's awesome. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So talk a little bit about the, um, I don't know how you, when you launched Winona IT, you set out to be different. Yeah, absolutely. And you talked about IT industry being corrupt and people being taken advantage yeah. of. Mm -hmm. So I think you've alluded to it a little bit, but what were some of those pieces that when you said, hey, when we do this, that this is our this is our mode of operation. Yeah. These are our values. These are some of the things we're gonna just put out into the space. Yeah, one of the things I did really early on was I hired an executive coach who asked that exact question early on and got me really thinking about that exact question. And I I, I read an article he gave me. Um, I, I'm gonna give you a long answer here. Sure. Okay? Yeah. It's, it's important. I read an article he gave me about Sony, and. Um, I want to say it was in the 70s, Sony came out and said, we are going to be the brand that changes the global perception of what it means to be made in Japan. Hmm. And I read that and I thought, well, what the heck does that mean? Jap made in Japan means awesome stuff. Right, yeah. I mean, Toyota is arguably, arguably the best run organization in the world. Hmm. Manufacturing, certainly. Yeah, right, right. Um, Sony is an excellent brand. Panasonic. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you guys run as far as rechargeables. I've gone through every brand of rechargeable batteries I can think of. Pa Panasonic's the best. Yeah. Um, I, I did some research, and it wasn't that long ago. I want to say it was in the 70s. You, you might have to fact check me on this, but Japanese and Chinese-made goods were considered on par with each other. Mm. I mean, like bottom of the barrel. Just junk, terrible. Junk. Yeah. Junk. Yeah. Sony... Panasonic, a handful of companies lifted them out of that into this category of just made with excellence. And that reading about that was so impactful to me. I thought maybe Winona IT can be a brand, at least in Northern Indiana, that lifts the entire IT support, software development, cybersecurity, you know, lifts that up into the excellent category. Because my my opinion, and I think the general opinion, is IT support's terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, it, certainly my experience, that nonprofit's experience. Yeah. By the way, they were taken advantage of when we when we dug in. <laughs> when you I mean, yeah, right. There there's um I just I, I feel like it's enriching and and it's it's just a really positive thing to work really hard at changing people's perception of what it means to do business with an IT consulting firm, and we we really work hard to do that in everything we do. I love that. Yeah, I love that. So, what are some of the cultural pieces internally for you guys that just help to fuel that and push that forward? Yeah, I mean. Um, you know, we've we've developed core values over the years. And I think it's really important. Your core values shouldn't be things that you aspire to. They should be who you are. Yeah. And um, we've we've developed core values that I think really differentiate us. Um, one of them is is build meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. We have really good relationships with our customers, really good relationships with our employees and with vendors. I've had vendors, you know, reach out and say, I've got 150 IT companies like you that, that I do business with, and you guys are the best. Wow. You guys never insult me, never try to undercut. You know what I mean? Just, we just try to do business in a way that is different, and, and focusing on relationships is one of those really key ways. It's, it's super important. That's awesome. We've, we've showed up at um, you know, um, funerals, We've shown up at, um, we just, we do a thing at Grace Village where we buy an ice cream cart, we take it over there and we give out ice cream to the residents and nurses yeah. at yeah. Grace Village because, you know, it's, it's important. Yeah. Um, Love that. so it, it's, it's one thing to say relationships are important, but we try to, we try to live it out and we try to live it out, not just with clients, it's employees mm. and, and vendors as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I mean, I can say that from example, you mentioned Scott earlier, Scott showed up here one day, um, sat down with, with Mike and I, and I kind of had in the back of my mind, like, what's this meeting about? Yeah. And it was literally him just checking in on us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just checking in. Yeah. Yep. I'm like what else? Yeah. What else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what, yeah. like waiting for him to sell yeah, me what, something. What's the upsell here? Yeah. What's the upsell? <laughs> and it literally was just a half hour to sit down and just check on us. Yeah. And yeah. That was awesome. I mean, yeah. just totally unique. So yeah, 
that's we call that a goodwill visit and and it's the whole purpose is just how, how are you guys doing how mm-hmm. are you feeling about your services what do we need to take a look at um Continuous improvement. You know, another core value of ours is always learn, improve, and be curious. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, how are you, you going to do that with um, 150 clients? You, you got to meet with them. You got to have those conversations regularly. Take your, you know, I, that goodwill visit, you might not have um, unloaded on them. Maybe another client does. But the point is you come back, you have some intel, you get better. Yeah. And... Um, it's just like it's in our DNA. Love it. Love it. Mm. So with learning and, and being curious, um, I would imagine we have some similarities in, in our businesses in this. Uh, Absolutely. Technology is evolving constantly. Yeah. Yes. Things are changing yes. uh, constantly. Yep. First, how are you staying on top of it? What, mm-hmm. are you, what are you doing with your team in that? And then, yeah, what are what are some of the, the big things you're seeing right now in terms of trends? Oh, really good question. Um, you know... I get that question a lot sure. <laughs> and, and it's, it's a really excellent question. I think my answer might disappoint some people out there, but one of the ways that we've decided to, to do business is um, we, we have a really strong partnership with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. We're basically outsourcing R and D to them. We're basically, you, you, we're, we're on their bandwagon if you yeah. would. Sure. Now I think of organizations to partner with, um, it's a pretty good one, yeah. especially yeah. when your focus is <laughs> enterprise yeah. IT. Um, and and look, we're not fanboys like the whole Google versus Microsoft. We we try to actually stay a lot, stay out of that. Mm. Um, but we're we're tied to them, therefore, you know, we we really rely on them to be cutting edge, and and we absorb what we can and implement what makes sense. And um, that's been one of our strategies. One of our strategies has been to ride their coattails, if you would. Hmm. Um, again, some downside to that, but you know, there's a handful of companies in the world you could probably do that to, and, and they're probably they're probably number one. Yeah, yeah. Um, in some of the other areas that are, are are relatively more limited, or not limited, but just more specific, um, we we do spend a lot of time doing our own R and D, experimenting sandboxes and you know cybersecurity is a good example mm. um we've got dedicated professionals who are in that space and and uh they're they're going through education constantly and um you know that's that's another way to do it as far as what we're seeing right now i mean ai is is obviously <laughs> all the rage for everything yeah. um i think what we'll see there is we will see a lot of day-to-day implementation of a chat GPT like mm. thing. I know yeah. Microsoft is calling it copilot. Mm. We saw a demo recently where you open up outlook and, and you type into this little box, you say like, Hey, um, generate a job description for a, a video editor. And in, in outlook, it'll create that job description. And then the person wrote at the top, Hey Matt, you know, review this JD and let me know and hit send. And it took, 10 seconds instead of two hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a lot of that integrated into the day to day. And um, whether it's word or outlook or, or what have you, we're going to see AI enabled shortcuts, if you would, that, that I think are going to speed things up for people. Awesome. Awesome. So we've had the privilege of working with you to produce your podcast. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And (laughs) IT's wired for growth. Wired for Um, growth. Make sure to check it out. Definitely (laughs) check that out. Um, Like, and subscribe. Um, (laughs) And you guys have an episode devoted to IT. So great conversation. I would encourage people to go check that out. But for our listeners, are the robots going to take over? Uh, yeah. What, what is what? What should we be fearing in that regard? <laughs> okay, I love this question. <laughs> I love this question, and people uh, people don't anticipate this answer. I think we spend time thinking about that today, and what we really need to be thinking about instead is how is the world going to change, and how do we adapt, and who's going to get displaced. And who's going to be hurt by this? The, and, and so I love the question, mm-hmm. but my real answer is all the apocalypse type talk is truly a distraction to what's right in front of us. And I'll give you a good example. Um, there's a huge market out there for virtual assistants. Mm. And I know awesome virtual assistants personally that do 
phenomenal work. The reality is, I, I think a, a large portion of what they do is going to be automated here uh, in no time at all. Okay. So what do you do with that? What do you do with those jobs? Is it 10 million people? I, I, don't, I don't know. Is it 5 million? I don't know. Right. But, um, you know, Matt, and you and I have talked about this, and we talked about it with Dr. Hoffer as well. Are we prepping our children to participate in this revolution yeah. or to be, again, displaced by it? Yeah. Um, it takes skills in, in math and fit. I mean, we, you know, we've gone over this before, but it takes expertise to contribute to this. And AI is going to generate an unbelievable amount of wealth for people mm. that are able to take advantage of this. Yeah. And, um, you know, those are the things I think we need to be focused on and, and, and working towards. And the probability of that is 100 percent, in my, mm -hmm. my opinion. And this this t apocalypse type talk um, right now, I would say, you know, it, it's 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 just not there. Yeah. It just doesn't exist. I, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not saying never think about those things. Yeah. Sure. But sure. today the topics I brought up are getting zero attention, hmm. zero attention. Yeah. Wow. I mean, again, it's that opportunity mindset of yeah. they're like, it's happening. Yeah. The world is changing. It's the next like revolution for us of like, how are we moving things forward? Yeah. Um, and yeah, how, who, who are going to be the ones who jump on are the early adopters and who are the ones who want to fight it? And right. then right. they get caught playing catch up and it's like, yeah. how are we, you know, preparing? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I know we're, I'm a huge, I spend more time on chat GPT, yeah. I think, than anything now. Yeah. It's just yeah. like such a, as a creative to like have something in your head and be like, hey, I need to get this like out. I just need to get that, that again, that first step forward. Yeah. And it is the, it'll get you 10 steps down the road. To yeah, do absolutely. Now I can yeah start refining and get it to where, yeah, the efficiency. I just, yeah, I love it. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's like this to have a brainstorm partner, yes. right? Yeah. And I heard somebody say, call it one time of treat it like it's an intern, yeah. right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like you're not trusting it to run the company, yeah. right? but yeah. somebody that you can have a brainstorm yes. conversation with and just help get the thoughts out of your head yeah. onto yeah. paper. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, I, I know in our industry it's, it's, it's hard and it's controversial, just the whole idea of the copywriting yeah. side of things. That'll and, be sorted out. I, I feel like that's that's in the bucket right now of immediate problems that need attention. Like, yeah. you know, we were talking earlier, just a minute ago. That will get sorted out. I, I feel confident that that was um, the copywriting issues that came up were just a totally unforeseen consequence of of this thing getting launched relatively quickly and, and made available to the public yeah. in, in <laughs> one broad sweeping you know brush. But I, I think that issue is being taken really seriously. We're, we're getting information from Microsoft that there's already um, a lot of progress being made in that regard. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. So room for regulation. Yeah. Definitely. Room for some guardrails. Absolutely. I mean, I think the brightest minds in the world right now are screaming for some regulation yeah. and and. You know, not a total lockdown. Um, we, we need we, to know some like, yeah, this is the lane. Here's some, you know, yeah. here's the sandbox that we can play yeah. in a yeah. little bit with it. Yeah. Let's innovate inside of that. Cause Definitely. I feel like it is growing so fast. I it mean, is. It's like the new like announcement with like, you know, ChatGPT4 and the new evolution of that. And yeah. it's, and I mean, I was on it the other day. It's like how fast it is now. Like it's oh, yeah. insane. And being able to like plug in a website, pull all the content from it to yeah. be able to give you like it's. Yeah, it's, it's it awesome. is it's nuts. Yeah, it is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, so with that, um, we'll dovetail that into you know when you look at the future, technology, all these yeah. things. What are you excited about for, for you, for Winona IT, mm. your team as you're leaning into the future? One of the biggest things, and it's it's related to this, is um, a lot of customers of ours have a lot of data. I mean, just a just a ton of data. And it's like, man, how do we use this? How do we, what, what, what do we do with this? And what, yeah. what's the optimal way to read this, interpret this, analyze this? And there's a lot of really powerful tools out there that have gotten us to a certain point. But I, I want to give you an example of something that I saw in, in real life that was unbelievable. It was a, um, I think it was a hotel, um, had, had just unbelievable amount of data over the last 10 years. They dumped it into a chat GPT like 
service. Mm. And they say, give me the number one trend amongst repeat customers. And it was like three, four, five seconds later, it said, your visitors that actually buy a day pass to your spa are like three times more likely to come back at some mm -hmm. point in the near, in the future. And it was like that, that data, frankly, was, oh, it always existed, yeah. but it was never accessible. Yeah. It would have taken, I don't It's just, it truly is impossible yeah. to extract that otherwise. <laughs> and it was like 10 seconds yeah. and it, and it spit that information out. Now you're, you own these, let's say hundred hotels mm -hmm. and you know, someone visits your spa or buys a spa day pass. Think about what you can do with that. Think, you know, how many of your hotels don't have a spa? I bet they're getting one here pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> you know, that, that type of, of useful information leads to efficiencies and optimizations that I think create, again, they create more opportunities, yeah. more wealth. They, they, frankly, they benefit everybody. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really what I'm looking for. And I feel like that's right around the corner. Yeah. Which, yeah. And that, cause it, it is, it's so true. Like the company's like, we have all this data, like everyone's collecting. It's like, we yeah. know that we need it, Yeah. but then it's like, who's actually taking the time to go back? Like who's on your team? That's like, I mean, that's their full-time job yeah. for some organizations. Like, Hey, we're going back. We're looking through all of these mm -hmm. things to try to forecast what's coming. Yeah. And yeah. now it's like, hey, we can like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> process it instantaneously yeah. to know, hey, here, here's some of the trends and how do we forecast out better for those? Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. What what it took prior, you know, I think people that are in executive positions that have really really good intuition tend tend to separate from the pack mm -hmm. one way or another. Yeah. Well, that that that's and not everybody has that. You know, and so I think, um, you know, whether an analyst or an executive had this intuition that the spa was was that important or had some sort of indicators, I think in the future that information is just going to be crystal clear. And that's that's so important. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So I was going to ask you about just wild client story. Wild <laughs> I got moments. plenty of those. Um, <laughs> And you can certainly share one if you want, but you referenced something at the beginning of, of the episode, uh, oh, yeah. you and I's yes. unintentional road trip <laughs> across the country. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not sure it gets much more crazy than that. No, that's one of the crazy. So <laughs> yeah, the very short version of that, Matt and I, a client invited us to, to go up to Devil's Thumb Resort, right? And that's yeah, it's in Colorado. In, that's in Colorado. Yep. Yeah. What's the town that's in? It's not Denver. Is it Boulder? Boulder, maybe. Yeah, we flew into Denver. Yeah, yeah. And 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 Matt and I. So it was a leadership retreat for their company. That's right. We were coming in as yep. supportive. You know, you from the IT side, right. us as the storytelling capturing mm -hmm. side. So yeah. so yeah, fly into Denver. Yeah. And I I never feel great when I fly. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but you're you just you're just it's never great. Yeah. yeah. And I remember landing. I was a little bit tired, and I just didn't feel all that great. When I turned my phone off airplane mode, I got like literally 10 text messages from different people. I have COVID, I have COVID. You know, my wife's saying, I have COVID. I'm like, what, <laughs> what do I do? And um, Matt, I can't even tell you how terrible I felt. <laughs> like you, I knew you were going down with me one way or another. Well, cause we had, we had first, we, we got up, you know, in Warsaw, we yeah. got in your truck and we drove to the Detroit airport. That's right. We drove <laughs> so to Detroit. We've, so we've been in a car together yep. for three hours. That's right. And then we've sat next to each other on a plane That's right. for an additional three hours. Did I give you my headphones? Did I gave you, you, you did, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You let me borrow some headphones. But no, yeah. here's what I here's Here's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> here's what I remember. Not, we, not that far. We, yeah. <laughs> I remember this so well because we fly out of the Detroit airport a fair amount and, and there's you and I sat down for lunch before our flight. Okay. And I remember us sitting down um, at this little Italian kind of bistro place and you looking across and you're like, I, do I look okay? And <laughs> really? I was like, you asked me and I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, huh. I don't know. I don't know if I feel too good. And so there was even just a little bit of like premonition of like okay. something's going down okay. here. So anyway, back to uh, that's funny. I don't phone out of that, airplane but... mode. <laughs> yeah, we get off the plane and I had to make a quick decision. Do I do I go up to this resort <laughs> and risk it? And what sorry, was this twenty twenty one? Let's see. Or this, 2020. Even. This was fall of 2020. September fall, September 2020. Yeah, that was a different time in the world too, it was. Than, than today, it just was as a, a reminder to yes, everybody. Yes, yes. So I get, I get out of the plane 
and I make the decision, I'll, I'll go get tested. And so there was testing in the airport. There was, there yeah. was a testing in the airport. I go get tested and she comes back in the room like 20 minutes later and she goes, no, you're positive. Absolutely. Which means both Michael and I are now instantly on <laughs> yeah, a right. no-fly list. Yep. We're on the no-fly list. Well, I certainly was. I don't know if you were. Well, because I think what we'd processed through was that I wouldn't get tested in that moment okay. until we figured out how we're going to get okay. home. That's because right. at this That's point, right. I'm not positive. Right. You're, you're contact That's right. traced. I'm contact not, traced, but yeah, like I'm also our system. only hope to get us home. <laughs> yeah. So... She said, you, you've got two options. There's a COVID reserved hotel for you downtown, which sounded just terrible. <laughs> yeah, what a fun time. Yeah. And, and, and they were like, yeah, you got to stay in your <laughs> room for camp seven over days. Here. Wow. What are you going to do in a hotel room for seven days? <laughs> yeah. Or you can rent a car and you can drive home. Was it 24 hour drive? 21 hour? Yeah, it's 20, somewhere it's 24 in 24 from Denver. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 24. And I remember, I remember asking you and you're like, we're headed over to uh, Enterprise, man, we're, or Avis. We're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drive. Well, because again, your wife is home with yes, COVID, and right. she's super pregnant. Nine months pregnant or eight <laughs> months pregnant. Yeah. So it was that's very right. very right. clear to me of like, <laughs> Michael, we home. are not hanging out in Denver <laughs> yeah. for seven days in a that's hotel. Right. We got to get right. home. Now this is kind of a, a sad part of the story, but my wife was super sick. Yeah. She ended up being hospitalized. Yeah. Um, she was really not doing well eight months pregnant um it that that was scary i mean yeah. she was in the hospital I, seven days maybe yeah yeah she got down to like 110 pounds oh. eight months pregnant um it was horrible i mean but the long here, here's the silver lining right yeah. here's the optimistic yes matt and i had many great conversations <laughs> yes <laughs> i felt Terrible, both both mentally and physically terrible. And um, we made it back. We made it back. Two days? Yeah. No, I mean, we, we, yeah, we pretty much drove until we couldn't drive anymore, stopped and got a couple hotel rooms and then just got right back up and kept driving. But what I remember is when we went down to, you know, Enterprise, it was because we had a rental car to take us to the resort and it was like, hey, we need to change our reservation um, <laughs> to Detroit. <laughs> we need to go to Detroit where our car is yeah. parked. Um, and we also need the largest car that you have. Again, yeah, that's fall right. 2020, so, we don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, so they yeah. gave us this Ford Expedition. Yep. We set you up in the back seat. <laughs> yep. I'm in the front seat. We both got N95 masks. Oh, we yeah, have right. all the windows open. So literally, there were times we're we're blowing down the interstate, you know, 80 miles an hour with yep. the windows open, N95 oh, masks on. Just like, I think this is the best we can do to yeah. stay safe. We didn't have a clue. We didn't you have, ended up not getting sick. I didn't get sick. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was absolutely crazy that, yeah, yeah, out of all that, I was fine. But, that was nuts. That was nuts. But, yeah. it, you know, silver lining was um, a lot of good conversations from that. And, absolutely. Yeah, sorry Absolutely. you missed the resort, man. Hey, it looked like a blast. <laughs> hey, it's all it's all good. It's all good. I feel like we we made some uh, some lifetime memories there. All right, so real quickly as we're wrapping up here, we've got some rapid fire questions. Okay, uh, just gonna throw some things at you, and uh, just go with with uh, top of your head. So, recommend one book that has significantly influenced your approach in business. Yeah. Okay. So one of my favorite books out there is a book called Integrity, and the author is Dr. Henry Cloud. When I started to read this book, well, actually, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. I'll start with you, Mason. What yeah. does integrity mean? Ooh, integrity to me is following through on what you say. Okay. All right. I mean, he honestly took the words out of my mouth of just, yeah, you're, <laughs> okay. a, man, you're a man of your word. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, when I went into this book, my definition was exactly what you said, Mason. Mm -hmm. It was, you're, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. You know, some people even have the definition, integrity is telling the truth. Hmm. Well, that that's an aspect, but what this book really taught me, it uses the analogy of a of a, a boat moving over the water, and there's a wake on both sides of the boat, and that's your career. That's your the boat going through the water is you going through your career, or or life rather. Hmm. And on one side of the wake is relationships, and on other side of the wake are um, results, hmm. and you need. In, in work, you need results, but you need relationships. You need to maintain relationships. 
And he talks about how integrity is really making something whole. You know, a lot of the, the, the root of the word integrity or the, the history behind it is to make that situation or make that thing whole, which mm -hmm. certainly if you say you're going to do it, then doing it, you've made it whole. But, but maybe it's that apology that mm. you, you skipped over yeah. five years ago. We'll go back and make it whole. Yeah. That's, and, and, you know, these, these things are related, but going through your career, going through my career as an entrepreneur, I want to foster great relationships and, and I want to have good results. And you can do both. You don't have to pick one or the other. And operating with integrity is choosing to do both. Wow. So very good book. So good. Love, Love that. It. Yeah. If I was supposed to give you like a one word answer. So no, 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 this is perfect. <laughs> Love this. Yeah. I actually feel like a lot of these, I want you kind of like to, yeah. Yeah. Feel free to expand. Okay, yeah. great. Because like the next one, it's like, where, uh, where are you drawing inf uh, inspiration from? And like, how do you feel yourself for the day? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, admittedly, um, and, and maybe this is me personally, but it comes and goes and it's, it's in waves. Yeah. Um, I recently heard an interview by the, the founder of NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA is, is it's like a trillion dollar company now. It's wow. one of the top three or four companies in the world. And they started off making video cards, okay. but now they're in the AI chip business. Gotcha. And, um, they asked him, they said, would you do this all over again? He goes, well, I know the answer you're looking for is absolutely yes. Yeah. He goes, but if I go back in time and I looked at all the shame, yeah. embarrassment, mm. sacrifice, mm. Um, stress, the personal relationships I've, I've really damaged, I, I think his answer, what I'm going to screw the punchline up. I think his answer was essentially, I, I don't think I would. Uh, wow. Or I, I don't know. Yeah. Now, did you I'm share this on LinkedIn? I feel like I saw this video on okay. LinkedIn that someone okay. shared this interview. It I, I did so it. Good. It is so good. Yeah. Yeah. And so where do I draw inspiration from? I draw, I, first I wanted to, pre I just wanted to say that, you know, it is tough. Yeah. And sometimes the inspiration's there and other times it's tough. Yeah. And maybe uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are not really honest with other people, mm -hmm. which actually probably helps entrepreneurs to a degree, because if they think it's easy, then we got more entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I really draw inspiration from um, what we're able to do with our customers, enriching their lives, what we're able to do with our employees. Um, you know, we have we have an amazing retention rate. And um, people have advanced and, and done really well in our organization. So I, I think the impact we have on people, that's where I draw inspiration from. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So in a world of technology, what's one gadget, tool, or app that you just cannot imagine life without? This is tough. Um, I'm a big fan of my, my home theater. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love sports. Yeah. Uh, right. I love movies. Yeah. We were watching Lord of the Rings on um, one of those 4K Blu-rays last night. It's like <laughs> so you see every single detail. Yeah. yeah. So I love I love my home theater. Um, yeah. I, I I wish I had a more passionate answer, but I think um, technology. I love it, and I also like to escape it at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of yeah. where I'm at. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Very so good. with that, if you unplug. Mm -hmm. Check out you going anywhere in the world right now. Where are you going? I have been wanting to do a survival camp for a long time. Mm. Yeah, have you watched Alone? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I love Alone. It's, We're watching it right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, great. yeah. yeah. So what season? Good. Latest one? The latest one on okay, Netflix. Good, yeah, it's a good season. Yeah. I want to go somewhere for a week or so and just just rough it. Yeah. And um, that's been on my mind for a, a, a long time to do that. Second to that, um, I've got some family in Alaska and, and really love to spend summers up there and um, just have an absolute blast up there. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Hidden talent or skill people oh, don't know man. about? Oh, hidden talent or skill. Um, ping pong. I'm pretty good at table uh, tennis. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a novice electrician. So I, I've built like off-grid solar systems before with oh. batteries. I can build my own lithium batteries. Um, so I've, <laughs> I like to do that. 
you pause like I don't have any of those, and yeah. now you're breaking out. You're right. building yeah. lithium batteries. My my personality is when something's really interesting to me, I deep dive on it. Yeah, I yeah. deep dive. I love to cook. Yeah. Um, I love barbecue. I love to do briskets and yeah. all kinds of stuff like that. But I, I I deep dive in this stuff and then I move on to the next yeah. thing. So, yeah, awesome, it's amazing. So whenever you hit those moments of I don't necessarily like the the term burnout, but just like whatever, yeah. like the way like, and you need to to disconnect. What's that go to like stress relief activity for you? Just kind of recharge. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm an avid outdoorsman, so when I can get out in the woods uh, during hunting season, it's it's a really good recharge for me. And I generally take some time off in November to do that. Um, you know, that time in Alaska every summer is is a really good recharge for me. Um, yeah, I I think. It's it's funny like the recharge is a polar opposite of my day to day. Yeah. It's 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 time where I'm I'm fishing on Lake Michigan or I'm on the Ke- on the Kenai River catching sockeye salmon. <laughs> it, it's always the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, it's been that way since I can remember. But um, I really enjoy camping as well and and just yeah just getting out there and just getting away. Hmm. It's big awesome. for me. Awesome, awesome. All right, last question. Um, when the Atlanta Falcons beat the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles in the NFC Championship, yeah. will we still be friends? Of course. Okay, cool. Of course. Good. Um, totally fictional thing that's not going to happen. Super fictional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Pro- that, props for coming up with that. That took a lot of creativity to they, bring that one up. Chat GPT helped me okay, with okay. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a whole model for it. Yeah, yeah. Look at the historical data. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much. Yeah. We really, really appreciate yes. you. We appreciate your partnership in our business, our friendship. Um, thank you for spending time with us. Yeah. Uh, for people that want to connect with you, connect with Winona IT, how should they? Uh, find you yeah check us out winonait.com uh, we're on linkedin facebook um, shoot me an email as well michael at winonait.com um, you know love to see how we can help and um, yeah look forward to, to meeting new people all the time awesome and like we said before don't miss out on michael's podcast yeah. wired yes. for growth um, it is a good one yes. so Great, great leadership content in there. Yeah, yeah and that is visit. that is what's awesome about it. It's yeah. not just IT. Yes. You're diving into leadership and some of the amazing things we've been talking about here yeah. today. So yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing too, Mike. I just want to say thank you to you for as we started this. I mean, we were in a very similar boat and you yeah. coming alongside of us yeah. and just pouring into us, giving us those insights and learnings that you had sure. in your sure. you know, transition and building one own IT and yeah. going sure. out and um, so just appreciate your, your yeah. openness and willingness to, to help other entrepreneurs in this yeah. journey. Um, 100%. Which, yeah, I guess one final, like, leave, uh, leave our listeners with, like, what, what is that encouragement, like, inspiration to them? Um, if they're in that, like, yeah, the, the uneasy or knowing there's something that they want to be doing but not really willing to take that risk yet, of that challenge of, like, hey, see the opportunity and, and go seize it. Yeah, you know, really, really good question. I, I, I think the ultimate guidance that I would give is you can overcome a lot of adversity and you can you can um you can defy the odds. You can be successful. You can take a step out and do a really good job. You can start a business. You can do a whole lot of things in life. You gotta be coachable. Mm. You gotta be coachable. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Not only do you not know what you don't know. You think you know some things that are absolutely wrong. I mean, there's no, <laughs> wow. there's no yeah. substitute for what you guys have gone through in the last two years, mm-hmm. two yes. and a half years. Yeah. Yep. There's no substitute for what I've gone through in the last five years. There's no education can help, and I'm I'm not I'm not playing that down. But there's you got to be coachable because you you got to learn every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the people that I see that are not coachable and they're not willing to learn are the quickest to give up Mm -hmm. they're the quickest to you know if i use that that example of moving overseas they were the ones that that stayed at home they were the ones that went to the um uh, you know they left to go to the american church and then they come back and they 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 were just little america overseas you you gotta be coachable and and to be coachable you have to let your ego down a little bit and you got to say, um, Hey, I don't know everything. And I, mm. I'm, I'm going to absorb as much as I can. Yes. I mean, that's, mm. it's just so critical. And, um, 
Yeah, you, you also have to be confident, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a balance. You, you got to be confident, but you got to be willing to listen and learn and be coached. Yeah. And um, if you have a good coach that can can speak the truth to you in a, in a way that it's not set out to hurt you, but really kind of let you know where, where you're at, where, where reality is, if you would, um, it, it'll go a long way. I had that in my career mm-hmm. and um, really, really helpful. So, yeah, so good. Yeah, just, yeah. That makes me think of it as a quote that's really stuck with me this past year of um, it's been kind of my like little mantra of like, I'm, I'm brilliant because I know I'm not. Oh, and sure. I steal from those who are. Sure. And it's sure. that like just constantly looking for those who yeah. are further down the road from you or, and, you know, been through some of those life experiences and being able to draw from those. And yeah, know that even the things that you think that, you know, yeah. there's different perspectives and yeah. being able to constantly, yeah, learn and pivot and yeah, yeah. just continue growing. Amazing. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be agile you gotta be willing to to make adjustments and um, get feedback take the feedback seriously make adjustments um, that that loop is how you can be successful so amazing. yeah amazing great stuff yeah I could talk to you all day yes. really <laughs> really appreciate yeah. this thank you for your time yeah thanks everybody for listening yes. in joining us for stories that move we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Stories That Move, brought to you by Dream One Studios. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode. And remember, if you or your organization have a story you're eager to share with the world, Dream One Studios is here to bring that story to life. Don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or visit our website at dreamonstudios.io. We understand how overwhelming it can be trying to bring your vision and story to life, but that's why we exist. And we've walked alongside hundreds of clients doing that very thing. Yeah. We believe every story has the potential to inspire, to move, and to make a difference. Let's make yours heard. Until next time, keep moving forward and keep telling those stories that matter. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time on Stories That Move.